Welcome into another episode of Bourbon and a Buddy with myself, Shane Reardon, sponsored by Wyoming Whiskey, one of my favorite uh, distilleries out in, you guessed it, Wyoming. They do this thing where, mm. Olin, oh, they uh, they feed the spent hops and grain from distilling the whiskey to the cows, mm -hmm. and then they okay. sell the meat from those cows to restaurants and stuff like that. So you're eating a cow, eating a steak that was eating the grain that distilled whiskey. How cool is that? That sounds cool, man. Now, have you ever cooked their steak or ate it before? No, no, no. They no. don't send me the steak. They just send me the whiskey, which I think is fucking That's bullshit. That, it, yeah. <laughs> I, I got, well, you could order. The one. I mean, you you could yeah, order no, it I, on a line. I'm just saying you could. No, I, I don't order, even know if I can. I'll order it. We'll I, cook it one night. What will happen? I, I think we'll it's just for restaurants. Oh, is it really? Yeah, well, I, I think see they you just know all these restaurant guys now. Don't you know all yeah. these guys now? Tell it's me order. thing now, isn't it? Yeah. It is, it Talk is, this, man. This Do your thing. Sports radio thing. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, maybe I'm going to grab Who would have known that beard, that. that beard was going to work that well? Nobody would Oh, yeah, known. there's, and that's why they like me, because there's so much food still left in there. So I, I carried it <laughs> around with me. Um, <laughs> how, how are you doing? It's been a while since I've gotten to talk to you. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's been a while since, um, you know, people uh, mm -hmm. it, it let, I don't know since how to I got thrown it, off but, the radio? Yeah, since you got yeah. thrown off the radio from from yeah. people who let social let's, let's, media make them so and comfortable. Let's me and you be ourselves. Let's me and you be ourselves. I got my ass thrown off the radio. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? So, um, no, I've been yeah. good, man. I've been good, and um, you know, just the the kids always keep me busy. As you know, I have six kids. Uh, I run a yeah. gym, so I, I'm training people all the time. So, uh, just that, pretty much, just running around chasing kids. Uh, at the gym, training people. Uh, I've been doing that a little more now uh, since, like I said, I got thrown off the radio. But uh, other than yeah. that, been good, man. All right. So, do we want to call it thrown off the radio? Because you didn't even try to enlist me to to help you get back because we wanted you back. <laughs> no, you like, guys did. You guys did. The yeah. show wanted you back because mm -hmm. we're not afraid. No, no. You, the, the, we all know that the afternoon show is not afraid of anything, really. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It was a good time to take a break. You know, I, I, I kind of yeah. thought the season was going to go like it was going to go. And, and how many times can you say they're bad? Although uh, I didn't know Justin Fields was going to be that electric. And he made it absolutely – he made it enjoyable to watch. Um, me and my family were turning our TV on, probably like you, to watch him. And when was he going to take off for another 50 or 60 yards? So, um, But, but I, I kind of had a feeling uh, this wouldn't be their year. And, and how many times can you say – the same thing over and over again. So it was a nice year to take a break, to be honest. What, what would it, what would it take for you to do it again? Mm, to to be, you know, delve mm -hmm. like deep into the media world again, because you're so yeah. good at it. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And you guys help. I mean, you guys are the best team in, in Chicago. Everybody knows that. So I learned a lot from all of you guys uh, working with you guys. That was, that was the fun part, right? Uh, working together, um, you know, wrestling in the, um, Wrestling in the studio, uh, that was the fun part. <laughs> you know, big oh, okay, there. yeah. Oh, you're going to go right there. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't go know. Right to be honest with you, I don't know. It, it, it's, uh, um, it, it was fun, but like you said, it's a deep dive into you, you want to be – you want to give the listener a good information. You want to tell them actually what's going on in your opinion. So uh, it's a deep dive into it, and when they're not good, to be honest with you, I'm going to say it like you know. If you ask me a question, I give you an answer. What I think yeah. is the answer. Uh, you may not agree with it, and that's fine, but that's the fun part of doing radio and television and whatever you're doing. That's the fun part. Uh, but when when teams aren't winning, it just always happens to be the question happens to be, why are they so bad and how do they get better? So you're always shedding on somebody, right? Because that is just the truth. When somebody's bad at their job and someone asks you if they're bad, the answer is usually yes. They are bad at their job. And the Bears have been bad for a long time. Uh, so that that's kind of the the give and take where I'm at with with doing the analyst work again. So since we started with football, I'll knock out my my first couple of football questions. I'm gonna go left to right on the offensive line. This is a, a brand mm -hmm. new segment. First of all, what whiskey are you drinking? What's your go to? No, no, this guy Mark Vives. He comes to my gym. Ooh, uh, he owns New Breed Training Center. So it's a Don Julio, 1942. And I, when I saw your show. I actually yeah. watched a little bit of the White Sox new manager. I thought, yeah. well, it would be a nice time to crack it open. And I That's know nice. Garza would be proud of me. Roberto Garza would be v proud of me. Very special. You know, so, yeah. 
Yeah. I just did. I wouldn't know where to keep the fucking bottle. It just it's 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 so <laughs> it's massive. It stands Listen, out. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a picture of my gym, and you're gonna be like, "What do people think of you?" Because that's all they get me. I have all these bottles of like twenty bottles of tequila. I'll send I'll send yeah. you the pictures of it. I love that. Um, we'll start with football here, Olin. the The Matt Eberflus rah rah stuff. Does it bother you compared to someone like? Brian Dable, who the Bears were considering mm-hmm. to hire, and he mm-hmm. was always going to be the head coach of the New York Giants. He was never going to be a Bears coach, and mm-hmm. he's such a grinder and a, a black and white football guy. Comparing those two guys, I would consider you someone who would be in the Brian Dable camp over the Matt Eberflus camp in the way that he manages a football team. Yeah, I, I would imagine. I mean, like when you watch the Bills play in the playoffs, um, I think they miss. I think they miss Brian the ball the most. The ball, you know what I mean. Like I think that's what they missed when I watched their offense uh, go against the Bengals. But uh, that's why I, I, I wish we would have had him. Just so Justin Fields had his his head coach was his offensive coordinator. Um, you know, like like you know, a lot of times like Lovey wasn't who he presented to the media behind closed doors. But it, as long as a head coach is getting you better. Uh, as long as he's helping you win games, as long as he's helping you advance your career, uh, you don't really care what he's saying to to the rest of the world, right? So I don't know what Coach Eberflus is like behind closed doors. I know guys I really respect, like Coach Rod Marinelli, who really like this guy, who think he's a really who think he's a really good ball coach. Um, some of that stuff, you know, it, it sounds like I mean, as we used to say on the radio, coachish. You know, he's he always gives coach speak. He's always you know we're gonna hustle to the ball and then. Obviously, this year is kind of like, man, I didn't see too much of that the last half of the year. So uh, hopefully he can get it going this year. But the only reason why Debole, Debole, how do you say his name, Debole? Debole. Debole. The only reason why Debole would have been my choice over this, as you say, the coach is a rah-rah guy, is that I would love Justin Fields just to have his his offensive coordinator, that guy there for his whole career. Do, do you think Luke Getze is that guy for him? He sure looked like a guy who was willing to adjust this year compared to what we saw with Coach Nagy the last couple of years, right? Uh, like we said earlier in this show, who knows what's getting cut out, what's not. Uh, <laughs> he, you know, he was electric. I mean, they 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 changed <laughs> they changed the offense for him, right? They changed the run game. <laughs> you gotta get over it, bro. We we're over. We're yeah, past um, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're past. We're it. over. It. Um, yeah. You know, the only like you know. The plan worked, right? When you watch this year, the plan, they got the number one pick. Um, they have all this money for free agency. I, I can't, I like, just like with Coach Getze, he, he made adjustments and he changed the offense a little more quarterback running in the red zone uh, so they would score touchdowns. But they just didn't have enough talent around Fields for me to know what either Getze or Fields are. I, I, I don't really know, to be honest with you. And, and really, I still think they're rolling the dice going into this year. I, I don't know what either of them are because the pass game just can't be that bad. But why was the pass game bad? And if anybody tells you to know the answer to that, they are lying to you. So in your gut reaction, what's more important to help Justin Fields' development? Is it a lockdown left tackle that can protect his backside or is it a playmaking wide out that he knows no matter where he throws the ball, they're going to go up and get that football for him. It's funny, right? Because going into the year, I, I would have said wide out. I would have said, man, you just, if you could just get that wide out, you're fine. Uh, because that's the way it looked around the league. And then we watched the Buffalo Bills play the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills have digs, right? They have the lockdown wide out, but their, their offensive line was getting beat, right? Like you need both. You need both guys. People want to say which one's more important, one or the other. Uh, you, you take the one you can get. If you can get a left tackle, you take a left tackle. You get a receiver, you take a receiver. You need both. Eventually, when you get to the end, when you get to the division round, when you get to the championship, if you want to compete every year, if you want to get to the Super Bowl, you're going to need both those positions locked up. And, like, you know, uh, that's why I wanted to run Armstead last year. Like, listen, he, he does get injured a lot, but he's elite. He's one of the best to do it. So, and, and even him, he's at Miami. Tua gets hurt. They don't. They, they don't do very well. So, uh, you need all the pieces. Uh, the Bears, man. I mean, I guess we. Could, I guess it's good for talk radio because the conversation is uh, what's more important because they need everything. They they need off. They need elite offensive linemen and elite wide receiver. Uh, they need uh, Cole Komet to keep developing to elite tight end. 
You need uh, some kind of defensive line, some kind of front seven. So um, I, 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 I'm going to stick with after this year, watching this whole year, after watching last week's playoffs, I'm going to stick with the offensive line. I don't know about you. So draft down, acquire as many assets as possible, and take the best available offensive lineman. Because, I mean, if you're in that draft room, it's the Bears haven't had, had a first overall pick since the 40s. Yeah, they haven't had their first overall pick for since the 40s. And um, having the first pick is a way you can change your organization for, for a lot of years, right? And I think you ha- – like, like Paul said, he said, unless somebody blows him away, Justin Fields is the guy. Basically, what he's saying is, I have to study these guys. I owe it to myself. I owe it to the Chicago Bears organization because we haven't had the number one pick since the 1940s. And and we have to look at this guy to ask ourselves, is he better than Justin Fields? Right? And, and, and it's so interesting to have a running quarterback because they're going to get hurt during the year at some point. Right? So you need, like, two of them. Like, you have to think – I think you have to think outside the box. I think you have to, if you're going to use Justin Fields as your as your quarterback, as your franchise quarterback, you have to think outside the box. You have to take a look at at least drafting a quarterback somewhere or drafting that quarterback at number one. Drafting the quarterback at number one, you have to at least look at it. You got to do your homework. You, know? you have to do your necessary scouting. And it's not just to to make other teams think that you're really considering to do it. You would actually think that maybe one of these guys could be better. And, and because I, I'm kind of with you, like, I wouldn't mind restarting the clock with so much mm-hmm. cap room and getting two, three more years from another rookie quarterback because you're not ready next year and you're probably not ready the year after. So if you could mm-hmm. buy yourself two more years, mm-hmm. is it is it Stroud? Is it Bryce Young? Is it Will Levis? Who do you like? Yeah, you like to to choose between them. It's kind of like Justin Fields, right? It's like to to know whether it's the chicken or the egg. You actually have to be in the building. You have to know exactly what was taught during the week. You have to know what was studied, what was he told to do, what is he seen, what is he not seen. Same thing with Strahd, uh, um, Levis, and Young. It's just kind of like until you get on campus, until you go talk to a coach, until you talk to his teammates, you just don't know. You know, they're all, they're all going to dominate in college. That's why they're going to be – that's why they're going to be in the top ten. That's why they're, they're uh, regarded so highly. But um, Ryan Pose, he knows, man. He, he's seen Mahomes. Uh, he's seen Alex Smith. Uh, he has Andy Reid to talk to. He knows he knows what a quarterback looks like that has to lead a team for 10, 15 years and win Super Bowls. So if he thinks he sees that guy in the building, uh, uh, then by all means, trade back, uh, trade for, you know, trade for your number one wide receiver, uh, get more picks. Um, you know, the, the funny thing about all that is the Cleveland Browns did that, I think, from, I don't know, 2014. They did that for a while. They still only have one playoff win in the last, I don't know, 30 or 40 years. So collecting picks is not a guarantee. Uh, You got to get as many good players and good coaches in your building. But um, the Bears, they have a chance to turn this damn thing around, man. I'll be honest with you. um, I'm excited. As everybody in that building, I I don't know about you, but uh, Kevin Warren, the new president, kind of excites me to change the culture there to change the path, the path that the Chicago Bears are on. You obviously have a different connection to the organization that I do. I've just been a a fan for my whole life, but the, the lack of success and the organizational disorganization from top Mm -hmm. to bottom until this new regime and until Kevin Warren has kind of beaten it out of me. So Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily, instead of, looking at it and saying, oh, I'm optimistic. It's kind of like a prove it thing for me right now, right? So you go into it completely neutral. And as soon as they do start to show that it's now a winning culture where previously it wasn't, then Mm -hmm. I don't really care. And it it sucks to be that kind of Bears fan. I don't really care. Yeah, I I don't know if I can, (laughs) as you know with me, I don't know if I can ever get to the point where I don't really care about the Bears and them winning and playing and I, I still prop up in front of my TV and study it like I'm doing radio. And, you know, obviously, like, you know, we do the podcast, uh, Jason yeah. McKee and Big Cat. So, you know, I'm always watching the game and really enjoy it. But you, you make a good point. Like, they have not won in a long time. The last time they won a playoff game, I've said this many times, uh, I was I was on the field. So uh, that's a yeah. long time ago. Yeah. Um, and then they have to change that culture there. Talked about it. Uh, we talked about it on the show last year. Uh, you know, George obviously got mad at me and 
took some shots at me for that. But but like I told you, like you, you asked me a question, I'm going to give you an answer. And, and that's yeah. my answer for Chicago Bears. Uh, but the funny the thing about the Kevin Warren is uh, he's from the outside. He hasn't been there for a while. He's going to set a new tempo in that building, hopefully a new culture, uh, require them to do things uh, that hopefully lead them to winning. But um, even with that, like, you know, for me, I, I look from the outside, I look in, I'm thinking, man, as good as everything looks, right, the first pick, it worked out. We got all these assets. We got the, we got maybe the, maybe our quarterback, maybe our franchise quarterback of the future. We got all this money for free agency. And I think to myself, but you force everybody on Kevin Warren. Like, if he's the president, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm the president, I want to hire my own coach. Yeah. I want to hire my own general manager. Like, it just, that to me, Shane, seems bears. So, you know and I mean it's, it's, it's funny that you say that because if you apply that logic to the last 25 or 30 years or whatever, that guy that was hiring the football people was an accountant. Mm-hmm. You, you know, yeah, so yeah. Yes. It, 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 now they finally have the right person who's not necessarily a football guy, but mm-hmm. somebody who comes from football and somebody at least comes from competitive sports. So mm-hmm. if this doesn't work out, then hopefully it's not a stepping stone job for Kevin Warren. He's not just trying to be become the next commissioner of the NFL. Um, yeah, but but success is success, right? Like you, you're in the radio business, like guys who are successful know what it looks like. They exactly. know what success is supposed to like. Kevin Warren has had a lot of success yeah. wherever he's been. He's been a successful guy and, and he knows what it looks like. And, and, and hopefully he requires that out of people. So we'll see. I just, to me, it's kind of backwards, right? We're going to hire the coach. We're going to hire the general yeah. manager. We're going to hire everybody in the building. And then we're going to hire the president. And hopefully and he's just, just there as the, the facilitator to building a new stadium because he's done it so many times. So hopefully that's what he's there for. And just to, to change the culture. What was right. you're a, a dude of of a, all the integrity in the world, an amazing father. Your kids seem wonderful. You've done everything for them that I doubt they want for anything. What was a childhood for Olin Krutz like to put you in a situation to understand that this is what you need for a life of six kids? And you married your high school sweetheart. So it's it's like yeah, the, the perfect American and- love story. <laughs> And, and her brother was my offensive line coach. So um, oh, I love that. I always tell the, I always tell the family that they, they knew I was going pro. That's why they tried to set me up with their, with his, <laughs> his sister at the time, but um, no. So he can um, get a job. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, growing up in Hawaii was, was obviously awesome, but uh, there's a reason guys end up playing football, right? There's a reason um, that, that the violence of the game and, and the physicalness attract you. So, uh, without getting into like the whole thing about what what my life was like growing up, um, it, it, you know, it worked out for me. I, I will say that it worked out for me. Um, and and like you said, I have six great kids now. I have a great wife. Um, so I just I just I, I, I am blessed. I, I'm very lucky to be in the position I am. Football has given me uh, more than I could ever imagine. Right? I don't I don't really want for anything. So uh, that's one reason. Like I would say, it was so hard all the time to talk about the Chicago Bears because most of everything I have, you know, like Ted Phillips and, you know, the McCaskey family really, you know, they signed me to four different contracts. So it was hard to talk about them, uh, but you're trying to be as honest as possible in your assessment of the team most of the time. Uh, But, you know, gosh, man, I mean, like like you said, I I don't think I can want for much more (laughs) than than every day to do the life I live. If it wasn't football, I asked the same question to Pedro Grafal, uh in my, my last episode, and he gave me a bullshit answer about it was only ever going to be baseball, and you can't take that out of somebody. Is that the same right. answer for you? Was it always going to be football regardless? If you could snap your fingers right now and say, I wish I was if, doing if, this instead. Yeah, if, if, it was, if it was to be a good life, yes. right. It was, okay. um, it was always going to be football for me. Um, there wasn't much else that really, I would say, interested me, right? And um, I mean, a lot of my family are longshoremen back home in Hawaii on the docks. And, uh, you know, my family does various other things. I don't know if we talk about it on a podcast, but uh, they do. And, talk and about anything you want. Like, like, but, like, <laughs> but like football um, was always kind of, you know, people will say, like, I think football attracts people that when the chaos breaks out, uh, it's, it's almost peaceful out there. Like that is where uh, this year I went to coach 
uh, with Jason McKee because I had this free time all of a sudden. I coached Carmel Catholic up there in Munderline. And, um, you know, actually Adam Hogue was a coach with us on the field all the time. But, um, like, just I remember the first game thinking, gosh, how peaceful it is out here. Like, everything makes sense. You know, everything between those lines to me has always made sense, and I, and I enjoy it. So uh, if it wasn't for football, uh, there probably wouldn't be much else I'd be doing. You've got two sons who play at the collegiate level. Um, mm-hmm. What is one thing that you can tell them about playing semi-professionally and professionally, about conducting themselves as adult athletes that you mm-hmm. wish someone could have told you when, when you were in their shoes? Yeah, that, that is really the best question of the night from you. But anyway. Um, I'm sorry. Here, you, know, <laughs> you take a joke. Me and Shane had we had a little back and forth. He's probably not gonna play it for you guys, but no, nope. that's why it's a little a little yeah, little yeah. awkward. But uh, no, no, not awkward. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> um, I've I've made man like you know the funny thing is it's a good question because I've made a lot of mistakes, right? I've done a lot of things uh, that I shouldn't have done, so I can give them a lot of advice, and I tell everybody like my. My sons are better men than me. And, and that's just true. And that's the way it should be. But um, I always tell them, you know, the, the things you hear, and, and they're true, right? Like get your degree, uh, make sure you play for the team. Uh, you know, don't, don't make it about yourself. And you always use sports, especially nowadays with all the iPads and phones. And even with my daughters, my daughter's a volleyball player. Uh, she goes to Loyola High School. She's 16 now. My younger girls, uh, my three other young girls, they all play sports and really just use sports to teach them about life, teach them about teamwork, teach them about failure and getting up and, and in a spot to be hard on them. So um, I, I can't really tell you like, like the, the lessons that you can teach off of football, off of playing the game, off the disappointment, off the training, off the discipline, off the committing to the team, off the getting up at six in the morning, going to practice, then going to school, uh, you know, picking your head back up after you don't play, you know, nowadays, if you think about it, right, like my oldest boy, he goes through because they gave a lot of these guys because of COVID six years. So they doubled his class. So they have six year guys playing in front of them. That's frustrating. Right. I don't, I can't really relate to that because like I told him, I said, if if the fifth year center would have stayed another year, I wouldn't have played as a true freshman. He would have been a starter. So um, that's that this kind of thing. But but then you tell them, like, you just got to go out there and be better than, than the next guy, you know. And so so it's, it's just things like that that you use football for to teach them about. And like, you know, and anybody can Google me. Uh, I made my fair share of mistakes. So so I, I, I do teach from a from a, a lesson of um, make sure that you're not doing these things, the things I did. Make sure you're doing these things. And I had a guy today, a young football player. He asked me, do you think. I should, I want to play in the NFL. Do you think I should get my degree? And I said, you're damn right you should. You're damn right you should get your degree. I said, I, I don't have a degree. And that's why some doors don't open for me. I said, that's one of the biggest mistakes I made. Now at 45, I ain't going back now. But, but I just told him, I said, but I can always give advice like that because I did a lot of stupid things in my life. And sometimes when you do a lot of stupid things, you can give the best advice. Not having that degree is the one thing that's holding you back from becoming a brain surgeon, right? I think I heard that. Well, no, well, heart. I was going to do the heart surgeon. Yeah. Surgery. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. That means a lot more. <laughs> that means a lot more. So I, I am, I've been very fortunate over the last six, seven years to get to know you and, and have our, our fair share of spats. And like you say, mm-hmm. you made mistakes. I have made mistakes and, um, and stepping over lines who hasn't. But I've mm-hmm. also gotten to know a lot of people that got to know you and, and, and teammates and, and, and whatever. So I reached out to a couple guys and just said, hey, mm-hmm. you know, what's what's one thing, you know, that's going to really hit Olin, right? Mm-hmm. Did you really not know who Howie Long was? <laughs> who told you this story? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was told no. you had no idea who Howie Long was. No. So tell Pat. Okay, listen. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> so <laughs> Tony Wise you guys all know Tony Wise I just Love had to Tony talk to him the other day yeah Tony's great yeah. he asked it was I think it was Dermani Dawson versus Howie Long he was he was playing a one-on-one pass rush in Platteville and really the 21 year old Olin 
I was trying to be an asshole and I did not want to answer any <laughs> questions in his room. And of course I knew who Howie Long was. He was actually my dad's favorite player uh, growing up. But uh, he asked me, oh, uh, he said, Kroots, you guys all know him, right? Kroots, yeah. who is this on film? And I, I got no idea. And he's like, you <laughs> gotta be fucking kidding me. You don't know who this is? I go, I got no clue. And like I told you, like, Howie's literally my dad's favorite player. Yeah. And he was like, you, you, you have to go study football. <laughs> he went in on me for like 20 minutes, man. I think Manley was sitting there, probably with those story. Manley was like, this has yeah. got to be the dumbest guy I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I texted that to Manley uh, yeah. this afternoon, and within 10 seconds, he responded, ask him if he really didn't know who Howie Long was. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. I love Tony Wise. That's good. He would absolutely yeah. believe that you didn't know who Howie Long was. Oh, uh, when sure. is the When's the next time the Bears are a playoff team? When do they get their next playoff win? Everything goes right. It's kind of weird now, right? Because because they have one more playoff team in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say I want to say by two thousand and twenty-five. I want to say by two thousand. I want to watch. I want to watch a playoff game. That that's a little more. Ooh. That's a little more fan than analysts, to be honest. With you. Okay. So so if you're talking from your analyst shoes and you're saying okay. the 2026, 2027 season or the 2025, 2026 season where they're getting a playoff win in January so of 2026. When, yeah. When, yeah, they're in the play. I got, yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying 2026 playoffs. So, so are we saying season. they get their next playoff win by next year, the year after, or the year after that? So the fan in me says the year after, not next year. Okay. And then the analyst says two years after that. Oh man, that, that would be would that be the last year of Fields rookie contract, or is that the mm -hmm. first year yeah, after would they would have extended him? It would be, man, but but like yeah. they gotta hit mm. like they gotta hit on everything this year. And then they have to develop guys, which we haven't seen them do. Right. So if if, if you're looking for your analyst shoes, like you said earlier, uh you're in that prove it mode. Like Prove it, man. You yeah. guys got to prove that you can develop players. You got to prove that you can develop linemen. Um, it, it's just they look to me, and not to a lot of people, but they look a long ways away from winning a playoff game. Okay. Uh, one, one more quick one for you here, a two-part question. I don't think – like when you're, when you're done with this, you're going to go relax. You're going to hang with your family. Um, and your blood pressure for sure is going to go down after having talked to me for 35 <laughs> minutes. What TV show are you watching to relax with? And number two, I don't think I've ever seen you eat. What's your what's your go to snack mm. or or something to just hang out with? Like, what's your your go to food? What's in the cabinet in the fridge right now? You know, it's funny. I was listening to your last podcast. And I am yeah. a huge peanut butter spoon guy. I'm telling You're a you, peanut man. butter spoon guy too. <laughs> I grew up on peanut butter spoon. I'm telling you, like I will walk. Yeah. But I do it too many times in a day because I'm on a diet, right? So I'm always dieting. Yeah. So that yeah. like the peanut butter is there, man. But um, okay. I, you know, I'm a spam musubi guy. There's always some kind of oh, food that grew up in. I grew up in Hawaii. You know, my my wife, like you mentioned, high school yeah. sweetheart. So there's always some kind of Hawaiian Asian influence uh, in yeah. the fridge somewhere that. You know, some gyoza, fried gyoza is on the stove sure. or so, something's always some kind of spam must be or something's always there. Uh, wait. Well, thank you very much for doing it. Um, I appreciate you sticking around for a little while. Um, very good to see you on the on the computer. Very good to talk to you. Uh, hope to see you in, in person pretty soon. All right, man. Appreciate you. Oh, and thank you. Yep.